We're going to talk now about the angular analogy to momentum. In linear momentum, we talked about the product mass times velocity, but the angular case is going to be a different quantity. We know that in some of our other things that we studied in kinematics and Newton's laws that we could find the angular equivalent just by substituting the linear analogs to their uh, rotational counterparts. The rotational counterpart for mass is the moment of inertia, and the rotational counterpart to velocity is the angular velocity. So we could conjecture that the angular momentum will be the product of i times omega, and we call that thing L for angular momentum. So linear momentum is p is equal to mv. The angular momentum L would be equal to i omega. And these are vectors, and so just like the, vo the velocity vector and the momentum vector are collinear, the angular momentum vector should point along the angular velocity vector. Now in the linear motion case, momentum and force were related. And we can ask, will the same be true for the angular case? In linear motion, force was equal to mass times acceleration. But acceleration is equal to a change in velocity divided by a change in time. And the thing is changing is just the velocity. So we can move the mass inside of that change there and say that force is equal to the change in the product of mv divided by delta t, which is none other than saying force is equal to the change in momentum over time. That's old news. We've seen that before. In the angular motion case, we know that the analog of force is torque, and torque is r cross f. Well, if f is a delta p over a delta t, we can say that torque is equal to r cross that ratio, or that is equal to the change in r cross p over t. And as long as the product r cross p was equal to angular momentum, we would have torque is equal to the change in angular momentum divided by the change in time. So they would be analogous. But this suggests that angular momentum is equal to this new thing, r cross p. We just said, though, that angular momentum was equal to i omega. Are these two things the same? Well, it turns out they are. They're equivalent since r times p is equal to rmv, which is equal to rm times r omega. Remember that velocity, linear velocity, is related to angular speed by the product r omega equals v. And we can just move around terms. That equals mr squared times omega, and that's a moment of inertia for a, a single particle. Indeed, rp is equal to i omega. So they, these two descriptions for angular momentum the cross product r cross p and i omega, those two things are actually the same. And the vector direction works out to, to be the same as well. We know that if uh, omega points up in this picture when r and v point off to the side like that, well, it, we should have l pointing up as well because l is equal to i omega. But that seems to work out just fine because if l is supposed to be r cross p, and I use the right-hand rule, the cross product r cross p also points up just like omega does. So they turned out, turn out to be in the right direction. In linear motion, when we have a situation where there's no net external forces acting on a system, we know that momentum is conserved. And it turns out the same will be true in rotational motion. If you have a system for which there's no net external torques acting on the system, then angular momentum will be conserved. And we can do conservation problems just like we did in the linear case.